wanted to look in depth on the acting career of one Tupac Shakur. It's over. It ain't nothing nobody can do about it, man. What do you want from me, man? Nothing. Just came to see if you was high. Right. See how you been doing. Well, I ain't, I ain't talked to nobody, I. Right? I know. We <laughs> cool. Always will be. I just came to see what's up. Wow. That was a little piece from the movie that is on the screen currently right now called Juice from 1992. I don't know what to say, but uh, it took me a little bit longer than everybody else to see this movie, and I am a fool. I'd seen a lot of his other movies up until this point, but uh, Juice was one of the last ones that I watched, and it's probably one of my favorites. Um, Tupac is just acts really, 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 really is acting. Is I don't know who said, hey, Tupac, you should start acting, but... Whoever did um, in his time that he did act, he brought some really, 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 really awesome movies to the screen. And Juice is um, definitely one of them. That is the clip in which you just heard. Um, this movie is from 1992. Um, it also has Omar Epps in it, um, Jermaine Hopkins, Khalil Kane. Um, pretty much, I like in this movie is again, it's kind of like, it reminds me a lot of uh, growing up. Um, different things that these four young kids experience in this movie. Uh, Tupac, again, I think is playing a role that uh, definitely when you see the movie, you'll understand what I mean. I don't really want to give too much away. That's always my key is to try to excite you, but without giving too much away. And I think uh, Juice was a great one from him. Um, it was directed by one Ernest Dickerson, who uh, directed some other movies like Surviving the Game. Um, you know, generally he brought really, really, I think he brought excellent, excellent nuance to the, to the movie. He also directed one of my favorites, Tales from the Cribs, Demon Knight. But again, um, just a powerful coming of age tale. Um, if you like other movies like Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society, um, I think this movie Juice holds up right up there with them. Um, just a great, great, great movie. Definitely worth your time and definitely worth I'm um, checking out um, his next movie. Um, probably the one that I saw first was 1993's Poetic Justice. 11 year old me sitting on a couch watching this movie. Um, you know, back then it was a lot more. Um, how do I say this? I don't know. I'm hoping that in 20 years, uh, kids will go back and look at old movies or remember the movies that they watched when they were young. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, Poetic Justice is one of those movies that definitely um, hits me for different different reasons. I think uh, Tupac, again, acts his, acts his weight in this movie, along with um, Janet Jackson, who does a really, 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 really great, great job. Um, I think this movie, again, shows uh, uh, the acting chops um, of, of one... Um, Tupac Shakur, um, generally pretty much about a poet. Um, she's mourning the loss of somebody who she loved, her boyfriend, and she's on a road trip with uh, two other guys and her friend. And just again, um, just pretty much going going through things. Another coming of age tale, I think, a different age group, I think, than Juice, which is ironic because it's a year later. Um, just what this movie I remember a lot of mostly is that just Tupac Shakur um, shows shows his heart in this movie. I think he really acts awesome. I think he does a really, 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 really good job. Um, you know, I, I think it's 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 by the same guy who did Boys in the Hood, John Singleton, and um, very powerful movie and influential movie. This is this is not an equal, but. Uh, doesn't inspire to be it's a softer gentler film kind of more of a romance um like a road picture in the 1970s almost just really 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 um Shakur just really I think really just lays it all on the line in this one definitely worth checking out if you're 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 looking for something that's really awesome and really just just greatly acted by everybody who's involved in this one um 
again, this one that I'm talking about right now is Poetic Justice. Uh, Regina King's really good in the movie, too. Uh, Billy Zane is in the opening of the movie. Just just check it out. Poetic Justice. Pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, recently, I uh, for the first time, I've watched Above the Rim. Okay, Above the Rim, really, really good basketball movie. Again, kind of shows you know, a little bit about, I mean, Tupac plays a little bit, you know, he plays the bad guy in this movie, you know, he plays a stereotypical um, type of, you know, somebody trying to lure a young youth into doing things that he should not be doing. Um, Leon, really, really awesome, awesome actor who I like in a lot of different movies in the five heartbeats in the temptations a really, really awesome. He plays a basketball player that dealt with some tragedy at the beginning of the movie. So he's the good side, Tupac's the bad side, and either both of them are trying to guide this young basketball player who's trying to make it. Uh, which way is he going to go? Is he going to go good? Is he going to go bad? Well, let me just say, it's definitely worth you tuning into, especially if you like sports. Uh, Tupac, again, really good job. Um, a little bit in the background, more than the first two pictures that I mentioned, Poetic Justice and Juice, but still definitely worth um, checking out. Um, his next movie here, Bullet, um, this was made in 1996 before his last two movies, but it didn't get released on straight to video until after he had already passed away. Um, but again, worth checking out. Uh, so Mickey Rourke wrote it. Again, lots and lots of interesting uh, characters pop up in this. Uh, Adrian Brody's in this. Uh, Peter Dinklage is in this. Um, again, we're checking out. You know, Tupac again. He plays again pretty much a lot of the same character in which he is in Above the Rim. Not too much of a, a different change of pace for that, but it's definitely a sneaky good movie watching on a Saturday or, or a Friday night. Uh, really really interesting check that one out uh these last two movies of his um are really really good for many 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 different reasons um gridlocked really really i uh, enjoy a lot um probably one that recently i have probably revisited the most um it's 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 kind of like a, a black comedy it's kind of like a crime movie as you see it's got Tim Roth in it too. Uh, Vandy Newton's in it. A uh, really, really Aussie Lucy Liu's in it. Uh, Bokeem Woodbine, who's awesome, is in it. Um, just really, these two guys are pretty much, uh, just pretty much bad, bad, bad drug drug guys. Um, they're struggling. Um, they're they're just trying to to make it. Um, I don't want to say they're really bad. They're actually not as bad as other addicts I've seen in other movies. Um, but a lot of it is just generally the banter between Tim Roth and, and Tupac Shakur in this movie. Uh, really, 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 I think is awesome. Especially considering this is 1997. We're coming towards, you know, a little bit towards the end of Tupac's life. And he really got down on this role. Um, if you check this movie out. Um, it really will not be a waste of your time, especially if you like crime movies, you like good acting, you love Tim Roth. Uh, you'll definitely tune in and realize that Tupac does a, a really, really, really good job. Um, this last movie of his that we're going to talk about um, tonight uh, is the one that um, actually just revisited today. Uh, gang related. Um, you got Tupac Shakur, James Belushi, James Earl Jones, Dennis Quaid, uh, really, 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 I would liken this to the old 80s classic, uh, those 80s action, cheesy, really good, uh, definitely something you want to watch. Um, it's on HBO Max. Uh, Belushi puts in a turn that I think is really, really good, but Tupac uh, plays a really, what I would say, out of back to the poetic justice character, um, just loaded with heart, um, loaded with a lot of different, uh, what I would call care. And I think, uh, definitely worth checking out Dennis Quaid. Um, <clears throat> I had watched this movie before <clears throat> watching it today and definitely, um, Dennis Quaid, uh, puts on a turn again, 
that is different, and I think it's worth the watch. But we're here for Tupac Shakur, and I think um, all of these movies are definitely worth your time for many, many different reasons. Because, you know, well, he definitely brought it as an actor. You know, I mean, he definitely, he had the goods. He had the insights. He had the know-how um, to be a really good actor. And he's another one that I would like to have seen, especially as he matured, how much more he could have done or what he could have accomplished. But uh, definitely go back if you have an opportunity and check out those movies that I mentioned, Juice, uh, Poetic Justice, uh, Above the Rim, Gridlocked, Bullet, and the last one, Gang Related. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit, look into, I want to start looking into great actresses' performances. Now recently on the show, oh, about 10 episodes, 12 episodes ago, who knows how many episodes ago, we went and we were talking about some of our favorite um, wardrobes in movies. Um, one of the ones that uh, was picked was Dangerous Liaisons. Really, really great, great uh, movie. Definitely uh, loaded with a lot of good characters, a lot of good uh, actors, including one Mr. Um, John Malkovich, who... You know, you can't ever get a, a enough of Keanu Reeves, Peter Cabaldi, uh, really, really awesome. But tonight, what I want to take a look at is um, an in-depth on the great actress performances. And this one, the two in this movie are by uh, Glenn Close and Michelle Pfeiffer. Here's, here's a part from Glenn Close on Dangerous Liaisons. One of the reasons why I never remarried, despite a quite bewildering range of offers, was the determination never again to be ordered around. I must therefore ask you to adopt a less marital tone of voice. When I say I love Glenn Close, I really love Glenn Close. I love her acting. I love her. I love her. Just everything that she's in. Um, and this movie is definitely one she really puts on. She really puts on an acting performance and she puts on a lot of pancake makeup because of the um, time period. But really, 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 really awesome performance. Um, her and John Malkovich play a uh, scheming. Um, they're scheming to try to take down uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and her new husband to be uh, at all. Generally, like always, these type of things doesn't generally work out in their favor. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, great, great, great in this movie. Um, behind the scenes, uh, her and Malkovich actually struck up an affair. Um, but her act acting in this movie, you know, really, 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 really awesome. And she really does a really, really great job. Here's a little bit of a piece from her in the movie. You're only five minutes late, but I get so frightened. I become convinced I'm never going to see you. Again. Is it like that for you too? She's really awesome. You know, early performance from Michelle Pfeiffer in a lot, a lot of different movies now. Great. Great in the many, 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 many different things that she is in. But uh, this is definitely something that I think you should definitely um, check out. It's definitely worth your time. It's definitely worth um, your effort, especially for their two, both of their performances. Um, and again, this is uh, Dangerous Liaisons from 1988 uh, we talked about it recently on um our costumes um edition but definitely please please check out this movie and um thank you very much and we have a little bit more of bonus content so please continue to listen and again please watch the episode that will be coming up uh, this wednesday it's going to be really 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 good Welcome to a little bit of a look behind the lens. Wow, we are here today and we are going to be talking about the 1993 Last Action Hero soundtrack. This brings back some memories for me for many, many different reasons. Number one, buying it at Coconut Music on tape. 
tape store that no longer exists. Um, very, very awesome soundtrack. Um, the movie was not quite so memorable. Still got some good stuff in the movie, but definitely the soundtrack is where you are looking for the um, where you're looking for the excitement. I mean, right here from the front cover. I mean, this was the cover that they when they released this this bad boy. This is kind of how it looked. You know, you had right out. These are the bands they listed on here: ACDC, Alice in Chains, Megadeth, Queensrÿche, Def Leppard, Anthrax, Aerosmith, Cypress Hill, Fishbone, Tesla, Michael Kamen with Buckethead. Ooh, they didn't pull any punches here. It was also kind of a, a transition, as you could see through music. I mean, we got ACDC, we got Megadeth, and we got Alice in Chains, uh, Queensrÿche, Def Leppard. You could see a lot of different. Uh, Cypress Hill, Arrows, Anthrax. It was pretty much like, let's just throw a whole bunch of bands at the wall um, at the time who are favorites, I believe, of Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Michael Kamen, he did the overall soundtrack to the whole entire movie. He scored this, this entire thing, which was, um, well, it was a big epic for the time. But uh, definitely loaded uh, from front to back with lots of different songs here. Okay, you got right out of the gate here. You got ACDC with Big Gun. Um, besides Who Made Who off of the Maximum Overdrive soundtrack, a.k.a. ACDC's Who Made Who album, this is pretty much a song created just for this movie. I mean, ACDC didn't do this a whole lot often, and when I think of ACDC on soundtracks, I actually think of this before I actually even think of Who Made Who. Um Second up, we got Alice in Chains, What the Hell Have I. Um, excellent, excellent Alice in Chains song. What I would describe this song as is, well, pretty much awesome Alice in Chains. I mean, if you like Alice in Chains, you like what they're about. This is the song that I think pretty much encompasses it, and it's on the soundtrack. Um, Megadeth, Angry Again, recently saw Megadeth live. Um, Dave Mustaine on the stage before playing this song stated, that uh, good old Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger called him up and wanted a song for the album. So he said, hey, you know what? I think I got something here. I think I got something to uh, add to this. So he went ahead and added Angry Again. Uh, Queensryche doing Real World. Um, Queensryche at this point, I think Empire was their one of their hugest albums. Operation Mindcrime. They were many years removed from this. And I would say this is probably their last taste of something towards you know being recognized on a soundtrack Def Leppard two steps behind a slower track um I don't know how well it fits into this movie but uh not a bad song acoustic anthrax poison my eyes Ooh, you always need some anthrax and honestly in the late early 90s anthrax happened to pop up a lot on a lot of different soundtracks um Poison My Eyes, definitely worth it. Um, Aerosmith, Dream On Live. Interesting. I always find it very interesting on soundtracks when they include not only a, a song that everybody knows, but a live version. I don't know if Arnold called this one in to, 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 to Aerosmith, but you know, I don't know if it really even belongs on the soundtrack. To me, I would say this is the lowest point of the soundtrack. Uh, we, we come back with a second Alice in Chains song. Wow. Alice in Chains, you're on the soundtrack two times? That's pretty awesome. I mean, you're sitting to yourself, you get one Alice in Chains, you're going, I'll take it. But two, you're definitely saying, uh, wow, this is definitely something that is, uh, well, pretty awesome. Cypress Hill. Okay, well, we're going to throw a little bit. This is, I guess, their version of throwing a little bit of rap in there. Some Cypress Hill with Cock the Hammer. Um, not a bad tune, not a bad tune, definitely gets the crowd going. Fishbone, funky fishbone doing swim. Interesting to go from like bands like Megadeth and Alice in Chains all the way down to Fishbone. Um, very interesting. A little bit was uh was I gonna say a little bit a uh, little bit uh interesting was Tesla. Okay, we got Tesla, who by this point I'm saying I don't even know if they're uh What's the word I'm looking for? Pretty uh, in the groove, still doing stuff. You know, people are going and and taking and, and, and listening to them. Um, but, 
you know, why not? Let's include Tesla and let's have them do the last action hero. I think they could have, if they would have had someone else a little bit bigger doing the last action hero, the song, this might be a little bit more membered of a soundtrack. Uh, some of those upper songs, like the first three out of the gate, are some of the best songs that I've heard in the 90s by these bands. Um, ending it is Buckethead, who uh, wears a Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket on his head. And Michael Kamen get together to do Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. Um, you know, I think you're going to say to yourself, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not Jack the Ripper, Jack and the Ripper. Man, I will get in trouble if I don't say that correctly. Um, this was certified platinum in the United States, which means that it uh, sold over 1 million copies. Pretty, pretty good. And it peaked at number seven on the Billboard 200 chart. Uh, it was positively received by rock radio. Again, definitely, definitely worth checking out. If nothing more, uh, check it out for some of those upper, upper echelon songs. Like, uh, like I said, like ACDC's Big Gun or Alice in Chains, What the Hell Have I, a Megadeth Angry Again. As stated by Dave Mustaine, he called for this one. He wanted them to make it. So they went ahead and they went and made it. So thank you. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, tune into a little bit of physical media. All right. Welcome. We got a little bit of physical media here for you today. Digging into my treasure trove, which is just loaded with lots and lots of different different physical media. Um, first out, I want to pick up this bad boy. Ooh, this is the deluxe edition from, well, MGM Roadhouse. Everybody needs Roadhouse. It's last call for what? Last call for some action. Yes, action. Um, right up here, my favorite, like I was stating last week, some of these quotes they put on here by joeblow.com. Couldn't they get something a little bit better? This movie filled my noggin with good times all around. Joeblow.com. All right. This one is a lot of these DVDs. This has audio commentary with the director. Ooh. Ooh, this is cool. Audio commentary with fans. Kevin Smith. A documentary, What Would Dalton Do? Um, a Roadhouse featurette, and some trivia track. This is my favorite when you open them. Oh, we got a bonus disc in here. First, let's take a look at the... It's got the double deuce on it. Double deuce! Definitely, uh, if you're not familiar with this movie, it's about a bouncer. We've talked about it in past episodes. We're probably going to talk about it again in another more episodes. Uh, Dalton is a bouncer. He doesn't take anything from anybody. Brad Wesley's a bad guy in town. You know, if you don't if you don't have this one, uh, pick it up. Pick it up on any kind of DVD, ooh, Blu-ray. Watch it on your own streamers. But definitely uh, take a watch to Roadhouse. It's definitely. But you were probably wondering what this extra disc was in here. One of these bad boy two sided ones that the box no longer exists. Exists. Cobra. Cobra. Look at Cobra. And you're saying, what's Cobra? Cobra is a film with Sylvester Stallone. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, recently, I heard it. Uh, there's some Christmas scenes in it. Uh, recent, recently, I heard uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, her, uh, recently, I heard it was a Christmas movie. Whether you want to believe that or not, that's up to you. But I would definitely, if you do get a chance, check into that. Um, really worth it. Next up is the new sex sequel came out. So reaching into my cabinet, I pulled this out. And you're saying to yourself, wow, a movie that made in over $1 billion. Let's see what extras they got on here. Ooh, absolutely no extras. Not one extra on this DVD, which is sad. Uh, if you actually look at the back, there's a whole not a whole lot of anything on it. It's a real sad presentation, I think, on the box here. One of the reasons why I believe... Uh, that uh, this movie did not succeed. No, I'm just kidding. It did succeed. It made over a billion dollars. Let's take a look at what the disc looks like, though. There you go. There's the disc. And again, a movie that uh, pretty much a reluctant hero on a journey. 
um, finds a new world and decides to call it home. All right. What a bad description on the back here. Uh, yeah, that's enough of that one. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Hamlet 2. Ooh, look at those. Look at the, the dimensionally hilarious comedy heaven. Entertainment Weekly said dimensionally hilarious. Comedy Heaven by Rolling Stones, Peter Travers. I take him pretty seriously. Hamlet 2, Steve Coogan, Catherine Keener, David Arquette, Elizabeth Shue. Loaded, 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 loaded with lots and lots of other people. Really worth definitely checking out if you have not checked that out. Uh, a movie is uh, scathingly funny, says uh, Bruce Handy on the back here. Definitely about a gentleman who decides to put on a play called Hamlet 2. When I saw this box for a very, very long time, I didn't even want to give it a chance because of the title. I'm like, Hamlet? Hamlet 2? Really funny. Really worth it. Really definitely check it out if you can or you have not. It's a good one. Um, it's rated R. It's a comedy. Um, David Arquette. Uh, this particular uh, DVD combo here, it has deleted scenes. It has the making of it. It has a sing-along. I'd say uh, check it out. Definitely pick this up. If not, check out this movie anywhere you can. It is hilarious. Um, he pretty much takes over a class and decides to put on his own play of Hamlet 2. And when I say a class, it's pretty much a class that would never be interested in putting on a play like this. But they go ahead and they do that. And it's definitely worth checking out. We also have here... Um, this is my big one that I've been saving for today. Ooh, this is a goodie from a long... Ooh, the Fight Club box set. You're saying... Oh, upside down there, Fight Club box set. It's got our both of our stars right here on the thing. We got some... some ooh, we got it. Brad Pitt, Edward Norton. Pretty cool. Let's open this up. I like how it's like, it's kind of like wrapped, like in a, one of those old packages. So let's, first of all, let's, let's go ahead and say that this is mind blowing. Okay. That's as by said by Philadelphia weekly on the back. It is a, the bonus features is got commentary tracks that include David Fincher, Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, and Helena Bonham Carter um, behind the scenes. Multiple angles, commentary, quick takes, deleted scenes, storyboards, public gallery, concept art, and a whole, whole lot more. Um, when this was released, from what I remember, everybody uh, had to have a copy of this one. This is very good. This is very deep. This is definitely a, a hookup classic. Film and all. Okay, let's take this out here. Ooh. Actually, when you open this thing up, it's pretty cool. You got, like you stated right here, you got Brad Pitt, Dollar Turn says Fight Club. Self-destruction, be the answer. It's cool too, the way the discs look. Club on one side. Fight on the other. Edward Norton, Brad Pitt, which is pretty cool because I don't even have them on the right sides. What a fool I've been. Let's get that switched up right here on live. All right, there we go. Brad Pitt, Mischief, Madam. All right, what's in this book here? How to start a fight. Does that really have that in here? Back on here is all the, the really cool... I like looking at some of these, too, when you read some of these. Jack Smirking Revenge, The Middle Children of History single serving jack really cool um this is just loaded with a lot of e oh this is just pictures pretty much all this is is quotes from people who have seen the movie all the way from roger ebert all the way to people from an la times a uh, really cool little booklet though you know and you're saying to yourself if i if you haven't seen fight club by this point I think you should stop what you're doing. Stop this show right now. No, wait, it's almost over. No, I'm kidding. And put on Fight Club. Uh, definitely check out Fight Club again. Really awesome. Anywhere you can get a hold of it on Blu-ray, on DVD. Go ahead and stream it. Really, really awesome. 
Um, some of the other ones that I've discussed here tonight were a little bit of Hamlet 2. We definitely like our Hamlet 2 around here. Um, next up is a little bit of Avatar. Again, you know, we don't really hate Avatar too much around here. We want to sit there and say to ourselves, selves, we got to sit there and respect a little bit of Avatar because you know why? Why not? You know, why don't we respect Avatar? We got to, no, I'm just kidding. If you don't want to respect Avatar, do not respect Avatar. Um, we don't tell you what to do here. But uh, that being said, this blue disc DVD, uh, do not respect this DVD. Uh, this DVD is definitely something um, not worth respecting at all, I should say. Um, but that being said, you can still check it out. Next up, and definitely respect this, the cream of the crop, besides that fight club, is Roadhouse. Watch Roadhouse. Do what you can. Just get a copy of it. Please, 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 please. All right. Well, thank you so much.